Uh, what is the gospel? It means good news. I know that much. But mm. what is it in a nutshell? In a nutshell, God has created the earth, called it very good, and quite enjoyed it. But we quickly spiraled downward into rebellion and uh, into depravity. Humanity spiraled downward in the book of Genesis, starts with the beauty of creation, and it, it, it tells the story of how humanity, having rejected God, we were ejected from the garden, and that sort of that that is a re, that's replayed throughout history. What happened with Adam and Eve being ejected from the Garden of Eden, uh, where they rebelled against God? That that is recapitulated, you might say. That's that's a, a reenacted by the rest of humanity, and especially Israel. Not because they're any different from the rest of us, but God uses them as a people, as a kind of theater for the rest of humanity. And so we watch Israel. Uh, being given special promises by God, laws and ordinances, and we watch them utterly fail to keep God's moral law. And so they are ejected, they are exiled, and <clears throat> there's a promise that one day, one day there would be an offspring. It's one of the most uh, beautiful parts of Genesis. I think it's 3.15. Uh, the, the promise is that there would be a great, 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 great grandchild someday that would crush the head of Satan. And God keeps adding these promises onto that. Uh, he's going to bless all the nations through Abraham. There's going to be a son of David, a great, great, great grandson of King David that would someday come who would be the Lord of David. So you scratch your chin and you think, what the heck? How is that supposed to work? <laughs> there would be a prophet that comes after Moses who is a greater prophet, a better prophet. There would be a suffering servant to come that would be pierced for our transgressions. Uh, someone who was born of a virgin and who would regather God's people, and even from all the nations, and that there would be a giving of the Holy Spirit into the hearts of God's people, causing them to keep his commandments, uh, ensuring that they don't turn from him, uh, that there would be the blood of a new covenant. So we're aching and we're looking for the Savior, and under Roman rule, the Jews are longing for a new Joshua who would bring them into a real promised land and help redeem them from a spiritual slavery, uh, ultimately. And this person comes uh, as Jesus Christ. Uh, he is born of a virgin. He is God in the flesh. He is uh, truly God and truly man. Uh, he is concurrently. I love the the, spe the, the precision and specificity of our uh, theological nerd brothers here. Uh, <laughs> the, he concurs both as God and man simultaneously. He's not alternating between the two. He's the, the great God-man, and he lives as one who is not from below. He says, I am from above. You are from below. He talks. There was once in the, the Gospel of John, um, the, some guards were sent to arrest Jesus, and they, they come back, and like, why didn't you arrest him? And they're like, well, he doesn't talk like other people. <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't talk like he's from around here. Mm -hmm. And when he, when he speaks, he speaks with authority. He has the authority to forgive sins. He has the power to cleanse a leper by touching him, which if you know Leviticus, that should just make you go, whoa, what? Mm -hmm. He can touch an unclean man and remain clean and make that unclean man clean. He has the power to stop a storm. Uh, he, can, he can tell a man to get up and walk even though he's paralyzed. Uh, he can give the law from a mountain, as it were, the Sermon on the Mount as the better Moses, and he, he uh, unfolds the law, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is, uh, you might say, the original lawgiver. This is him. Uh, he, he, he unfolds it, what was already contained in the purity of God's law. He teaches God's heart for an obedience that comes from the heart, and he attacks uh, hypocrisy and uh, unrighteousness and uh, he, he, it's really interesting. In the story of the life of Christ, we talked about how Israel is like a replay of Adam, uh, a recapitulation, like a reenactment of what Adam mm -hmm. did. Jesus is a reenactment of Adam and Israel, but he is a better reenactment. He's the perfect replay. He's the better theater for what Adam should have been. Mm -hmm. So he goes into the desert. He, well, first of all, he's baptized in the Jordan River. And he comes up, and he is a, he is uh, the Holy Spirit descends on him like a dove, and he is sent out into the desert for forty days. And if you know the Old Testament, you should be you should be wait. I've seen this episode before. <laughs> this feels familiar. 
and he's tempted by Satan. Like, wait, that sounds familiar. He passes the test. Uh, earlier in his life, he went down into Egypt and came out out of Egypt. I have called my son. Mm -hmm. So if you know the Old Testament, this sm this quacks like a messianic duck. This is th <laughs> this this sound. This smells and sounds like the the corporate Adam. The that, that was Israel is 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 better shown in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the tr he is the true son. In fact, he's the only begotten son of the Father. And so he's he's a screaming billboard for the glory of God among us, tabernacling among us. And you're thinking, okay, well, what happens now? He goes down to, up to Jerusalem, um, you, north and south. It's south <laughs> going down, but it's sort of geographically up. up yep. um, he goes to Jerusalem on purpose, resolute in face, knowing what's going to happen. And he is crucified. He's he's a uh, he's a uh, Given capital punishment, the, the 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 punishment that you would think is owed owed to a, a a shameful criminal, he's executed as though he's deserving of sin, and yet we know he had no sin. So Jesus dies, taking the punishment for sin, and he goes he he is buried in a tomb, and he busts out three days later with all authority and with all power. No one takes my life from me, Jesus says. I give it up of my own accord. And the, the Bible says the Father rose him from the dead, Jesus rose himself from the dead, and the Spirit rose him from the dead. So it was this beautiful, unified, Trinitarian, singular action. Jesus resurrects from the dead with all power, all authority. And it's as though all the checks that Jesus was writing during his life, all the things he was saying, none of that bounced when Jesus rose from the dead, it showed all of his words were true. So we have, we have this promise that someday Jesus is going to come back. He's going to fully establish his kingdom, meaning he, the, the fullness of his kingdom will come. Uh, Father in heaven, your kingdom come and your will be done. That's going to happen with the return of Christ. The full um, lived out power of the kingdom of Christ on earth, a new heaven, a new earth, the full uh, experience of the reign of Jesus Christ brought to bear, that's happening. And that should be terrifying for those who are not forgiven. Mm -hmm. So I, I told my kids this past week, we were going through the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, one of the big, big, big questions in the, in the Lord's Prayer is whether your sins are forgiven. That's, that's when you go to sleep. That should be like one of your, the most important questions of, of your entire life. Are my, I can't sleep. If my sins aren't forgiven... Uh, my conscience should not be clear. Mm -hmm. If my sins, are, if, I, if I'm not right before a holy God who is coming back to judge the living and the dead, I can't sleep. I shouldn't sleep. I should be screaming in my conscience. I've got to figure this out. I've got to make this right. I have an omnipotent, holy God who has shown himself in the person of Jesus Christ. I've got to get right with Jesus. So the gospel is Jesus having died on the cross for your sins and having rose again from the dead three days later has promised. He says, anyone who hears my words and believes me, who believes in him who sent me, he has eternal life. He has passed from death to life. Good gospel summary. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. You're like, make it simpler. Okay, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Don't have all the doctrine figured out yet? That's all right. Cast your, go to the cross, receive the Holy Spirit as a free gift given to you by Jesus, sent by Jesus, the Holy Spirit as a free indwelling gift, new relationship, new heart, and he will enable you to live out the very life that he specified in the Sermon on the Mount. He'll, he'll start teaching you to love your enemies, start teaching you to forgive those that seemed unforgivable to you. He'll give you a, a supernatural new heart to attack the, the vile, fleshly, uh, satanic, gross sin in your life. He, he's going to teach you to put that to death and live by the Spirit and bear fruits of the Spirit and live in community with other Christians. And you can go to sleep like a baby. <laughs> and I am, uh, since therefore I have been justified in Christ, I have peace with God through my Lord Jesus Christ, you could stand in that peace because you're forgiven. 
And that's the best and only way to obey God in your life, is to first have your sins forgiven. You can't have that if you're depending on your own righteousness, if you're uh, depending on your own religiosity or your own flesh. So I know you probably wanted a shorter summary. No, that's the no, I, I think that's but fantastic. You're, you're an evangelist, so you're going out and talking to a lot of different people of a lot of different religions. And you know, in religion, there's... The, there's a lot of religions that would have Jesus in them and would say, yes, I believe in Jesus. Now, how is this different than born-again Christianity being saved? You're asking, what's the difference between the other Gospels? What, and yeah, the... like just, there's so many other religions mm. that have Jesus, but we wouldn't call them born-again Christians. Right, mm. like um, like I would say, like the Muslim religion. Um, they, well, they don't have Jesus. Well, like, they, but they don't have Jesus like um, a Christian would. But like but a they, Christian church. There's so right. many Christian churches or churches that have Jesus in their name, yeah. that sort of thing, but don't really believe the born-again thing like we would. Yeah, you, you, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And that's that's terrifying. That that in some in some sense, right? You have to have a miracle done to you in order to enter the kingdom of God. So you 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 need to know and experience the living God through forgiveness and through the Holy Spirit. You have to be born again. And we know that has happened when you are trusting Christ. You are trusting Christ for uh, forgiveness by grace alone through faith alone. So that'd be one distinction. Is that uh, the, the gospel of the evangelical faith or the historical Christian faith or the biblical faith, <clears throat> it's the kind of thing that gives God all the glory. It makes Jesus look good, and it exposes us as bad. Mm -hmm. He's worthy, we're not. He's righteous, we're not. He gets the credit, we get none of it. He is sufficient, we're inadequate. He feeds, we're hungry. So I think <laughs> the first thing is religion in general, as manufactured by humanity, looks for ways to give you the glory. It wants you to show off, uh, you to feel good about yourself. <clears throat> religion will also try to, it, 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 religion says, well, I, I need to feel, I need to feel, have a clean conscience. So it'll give you a checklist. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, it'll, I'll make it easy on you. Uh, you can you can have this obedience checklist and then you could sleep. <laughs> That's not easy. <laughs> and then and the gospel's like, okay, you want to do checklist? We'll do checklists and let's get six hundred something commandments and and let's uh, let's require purity and comprehensive love from the heart. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Uh, so that would be one thing. The other thing is the lordship of Christ. The, the Christian is called to submit every area of our life, mentally, bodily, identity, the whole thing. To the Lordship of Christ. He gets say over my life. I'm under him. He's over me. So false Christianity, maybe progressive, call it mm -hmm. Christianity, where it's not submitting to the Lordship of Christ, typically on um, issues that put you at odds with the world. So your, your sexual identity, your human identity, your mission, your vocation. Uh, we're, we're, what we're basically telling the world is Jesus gets to tell you what to do with your body. Jesus gets to tell you what you can say about yourself in the mirror. Jesus is a better ident he more accurately identifies who you are than who who you identify yourself to be. He's a better counselor to you than you are to yourself. He can he can teach you more truths about yourself than you can tell you than you can discover inward. Jesus is Lord and so he gets to define how I live my life and the world says no. I that's that's not good news. I, there's no hope there. If I want to be truly uh, joyful. I've, I need to reach inside my heart, find my identity in my own self-determination, and I won't submit to the Spirit. I will submit to the passions of my flesh, and I'll find f true freedom in living out my, my most dominant desires. Well, then the Bible says, you're going to be a slave then to sin. You won't be free. So Christianity is telling the world right now, you need to bend the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll have freedom. You have forgiveness. This is this is a win-win, and the world says no. I won't. I won't do it. So we're trying to uh, kindly speak the truth and love to our neighbors and say this doesn't end well. But if you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you you can live out. You can what what you were made for will come to fruition. Mm -hmm. It's a restoration of the, the original design in in a way that you know we were designed to have a relationship with Him and not have a barrier between us and God, mm -hmm. and uh, we put it there. Yet, when we trust in Jesus, that barrier is gone. 